astronauts are preparing for the next uh, major task on their list. This is to remove the RFG, the radio frequency group, from the S-band antenna. Again, the radio frequency group is the computer and electronics that control the S-band system. And this portion of the system will be brought inside the International Space Station before being returned to Earth for refurbishment and eventual return to the space station. Okay, so that's where we're going. Some more tether. And I'm with the ASB and I have the bag in front of me. Okay, Sultan, you can stow the wire tie caddy. And then I have a couple systems words for you when you have time to look at your left hand again. And then uh, that's why Caddy will go into integral rates. And yes, Sultan, we're going to stow the wire tie Caddy into crew lock bag one. At the same time, you can the grab. Is, are they going into integral rates? Or? Yes, you can put it on uh, any available integral RIT. Okay, Frank, you have a go to GCA to the ingress, uh, the install and ingress position. Keep we copy GCA to published. Our published position is 1.1 meters station aft, and we're starting motion. Okay, I'm watching. Good motion. Good motion. Half a meter to go. Continue. Continue to publish. Copy. Continue to publish. Ramping out. That's your published position. All right, let me take a look. All right, could I get another 30 centimeters station aft? The additional three zero centimeters station aft. Multiple voices in the mix now as NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg inside the space station is commanding the Canada Arm 2. Steve Bowen will uh, be on the Canada Arm 2 to help with the right, with some there. stabilization for the RFG removal. And uh, you can put bricks on GCA complete. Copy GCA complete, stand by for bricks. See the brakes are on, you go for APFR install and ingress. Go for APFR install and ingress, copy. And Steve, you can install the APFR onto the arm. You're looking for 12 Papa Papa Fox 6.
For Sultan, while call, you have that. Call, 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 call. Okay. Yep, good read back. For Sultan, while you have that bag in your hand, you're going to retrieve the large small ret that's on the handrail of that bag, and you're going to put the small hook onto handrail 8007, which is the same handrail that your temp stowed on. 8007, copy, small hook on. Copy. Great view here of uh, Steve Bowen as he handles the APFR, the articulating portable foot restraint, and places it on the Canada Arm 2, the latching end effector. Okay. And of course, we have another brief satellite handover. Teams here in Mission Control Houston continuing to monitor uh, everything about today's spacewalk, including the status of the astronauts inside the space station, of course our astronauts outside and keeping up with those tasks, as well as the uh, consumables for the astronauts, right, including their oxygen one. rates inside the suits. No, this one did not go all the way over. Copy black on black, and uh, we're just back with you from a handover, so oh, if you... Hold on. Called a pull twist test, we missed it. Hold on. Oh, I got the uh, black on black, it didn't twist it. Feels like it's in, but it hasn't twisted. Baller's uh, not going back yet. Copy a couple of notes for Sultan while Steve works that. Uh, one is that we're out of the range uh, for your erratic sensor, uh, so we're not worried about that anymore. Um, for your glove, what we want you to do is take a look at the flap and see if you can look underneath it and make sure that there's no additional damage to any other of the glove structure other than that RTV. And just a reminder that on the index finger, you've got that turtle skin underneath that RTV as well. I copy, and I did report initially that that flap has another RTV flap, but nothing is exposed. Uh, rubber. Okay, good words. Thanks for double checking that. Uh, so, Sultan, your next um, your next step is going to be to pre-stage the long wire tie on the clamshell MLI. Uh, so, just double check that you have a long wire tie left on your BRT. I get if I'm going to get any from the Ducati. Only have short on the my, my BRT. Okay, yeah, we, ag we agree with that, uh, Sultan. Sorry about that. I should have cut that before you put that in there. So we'll grab have you grab one long wire tie on the clamshell M line. All right, copy and walk. All right, Aaron, I'm having a hard time with this. On black on black. In the collar. Get a. Looks like it's in there. Collar does not want to move. Any suggestions? We're taking a look. Moved it a little bit. There we go. Now it's black on black. So I cycled the, oh, but then it came out. Well, okay. Now I got a 12. Got a black on black, but it's not in. Okay. We we copy that uh, it might just be in this soft capture. In soft capture. Hold on. Alright, now I got a good twist. Got black on black. Yeah, collar is very stiff. I think that's a big part of this. It is in place. Got a 
Okay, Steve. Crossing your 12, block up last, good wiggle pull. And we're checking, Steve. We may have you double check it. Teams on the ground helping NASA astronaut Steve Bowen troubleshoot uh, the install of the articulating portable foot restraint on the Canada Arm 2. Meanwhile, we saw the International Space Station enter an orbital daylight. Okay, Steve, we're going to have you give that uh, one more really good pull test. And rather than pulling on the boot plate, if you could live, uh, go down to where the load limiter is, just obviously making sure you don't uh, squeeze the paddles and make sure we have a good pull test. We got a good pull test. Okay, we're good. I got black on black. I got a good wiggle pull test. All right, that good is good. Man. We appreciate the setup, so your next step is going to be to assist Sultan with the RFG setup. Okay, I and bet off the IPFR. So we can have one of you install the long wire tie onto the clamshell MLI, and we'll be assessing the clamshell MLI for snugness, and then we also need to retrieve the EVA scissors and cut the MLI strap. Okay, I have the wires, Steve, and I'll uh, call them now. Slam show. Okay, let me get cleaned up a little bit. So I just got to... Yeah, what's my BRT is tangled up on? All right, Sultan, we're coming up. All right. And Steve, we think uh, what you could start doing is undoing the quarter turn fasteners uh, on the MLI tent. I can do that. And Sultan, you can move over to that clamshell MLI for the long wire tie. For that end, just uh, 52 degrees in the end, surprisingly. Can I drop a green hook somewhere? Pay the tension that the green hook is. Green wheel is which reach the limit. But that's fair lead, maybe. We'll check. And Sultan, yes, you can drop your green hook. Um, so we recommend one, one method would be to fair lead over by the port airlock toolboxes. Um, but you can also put your green hook down to get your tethers out of the way wherever you see fit, uh, probably toward the airlock on ESP2. Let's regard that. And I think it was uh, the red wheel caught behind the ESP structure. Now I have been up uh, to work. Yep. And we copy. Well, and I do not see the quarter turn. I don't see the quarter turn fasteners on the back side, correct? Uh, nothing on the back, just the, uh, the one over here and the ones on the front. front. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It's just ISS uh, forward and port and uh, on the high gain side. There should, there should be 10 total.
And then on the ISS starboard side, there's going to be a MLI Velcro flap that you can remove. Okay, well, I installed on the handle. I'll feed it through the loops. We copy, Sultan. And just a reminder on the, uh, a couple cautions for you guys around the antenna. Uh, we don't want to exert any more than about seven pounds into the high gain antenna. We want to min minimize loads on the low gain antenna. And once we open it up, we want to avoid, avoid the white paint on the RFG and minimize loading into the flat face of the clamshell. All right, they copy. Take your one copy. And that's enough, Steve, or? Okay. Yeah, you gotta, gotta twist it on there. Tuck it back through again, then twist it on itself. As our spacewalkers begin work on removing the radio frequency group as part of the S band antenna, if you look in the background at beautiful Earth, just above it is our moon. I'll twist it. And Sultan, once you get on there, uh, or once you get that on there, um, you can kind of put your hands on the clamshell and assess how much it moves on the uh, antenna itself. Uh, this will be where Steve is holding the RFG when we feed it into the airlock. I try to do a better job of tightening this. I think so. Just take the, the open end and tuck it around it three times. Just tuck it in and around it and then pull it down. So bring it back up. No, you don't have to do that. I'll, I'll do a flap maybe. Okay, that's fine. That will help. What do you think? I think you need to tuck it back through at least one more time. Sure. And Steve, by your left hand, there's kind of a Velcro seam along the RFG. You can open that up, uh, getting ready to peel it back whenever you're ready. Okay, let's fall the good. All right. All right, we can get to the last two quarter turns there on this side. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah, I can't quite reach them. And Sultan, your next step, you can um, retrieve the EVA scissors from the crew lock bag one, and we'll be cutting the MLI strap. All right, copy and one more. And Steve, we'll have you stand by on the MLI until, uh, until we get the strap cut. Okay. As we get that uh, MLI open, um, reminder to both of you that we've seen some MMOD strikes on the RFG, and so we want to uh, minimize touching any potential MMOD strike areas uh, and that uh, Z93 paint area. Okay, let me, uh, let me know my uh, APFR settings, I'll make sure I'm good there. But APFR papa, settings papa. 12, Papa Papa, Fox. Six. And I think I'm there. Okay. 
Okay, I have my scissors, EBS scissors in hand. Um, this is my location for the cut. Copy, Sultan, and uh, when you're at the clamshell, can you give us any words on how snug the clamshell is on the RFG antenna? But why is I tight, and uh, I don't think it's uh, like a proper grabbing point, but it's definitely closed with the wire tie. Best effort, and it's tight. But it is uh, rotating, if I, if I do. Of that, it does with that. Okay, with that then, Sultan, we are go for you to cut the MLI strap uh, nearest the clamshell that connects the clamshell to the tent. All right, we'll do that. Cut near the clamshell. The first step in removing the radio frequency group is to remove the MLI, the multi-layer insulation that has protected the hardware. The RFG was not designed to be uh, retrieved during an EBA. Uh, that you did get the small end of the large small on the handrail, correct? It is, but the large hook is still free. Where do I need to put it? Okay, copy. Yeah, the small hook on the handrail. And then uh, we have a request for you to close the EMU scissors, or the scissors until you're ready to use them. Copy. I'm ready to use them. Okay. You're going to cut that MLI, and we're about 15 seconds from a handover. All right. Copy. We are back with you on voice, waiting on video. No problem, and uh, MLI is cut. Waiting for uh, rewards on that. It is cut and would not pass no residue on the both sides. It's a small slab on the um, RFG time show. All right, copy. You can stow the EVA scissors in the crew lock bag, and I hope that was fun. We rarely get to cut things on EVA. <laughs> and your next step is going to be removing the MLI tent uh, and attaching it to that large ret that you have staged. Hi. Steve, we're going to have you move Perfect toward the e arm and have you start performing your safety tethers prop okay. and getting ready for ingress. Okay. Let's talk you through that real quick. Sure, I'm doing it right. Yes. So for the safety tether swap, you want to make sure your waist tether is down. And your first step is to lock your yep, green tether wheel. Tether. Lock green. Green is locked. Copy, green is locked. Check that your green hook gate is closed and the hook is locked. My green hook gate is closed and locked. You can now relocate your yellow hook to the SSRMS handrail tether point. Okay, going on to the yellow hook is going to the SSRMS. We'll put it on the forward handrail tether point. That's gate closed, slider locked. Copy, gate closed, hook locked on the yellow on the handrail tether point. 
Your next step is to attach your green hook to ESP2 handrail 8011. 8011, green hook, that's in work. All right, 8011. Copy green, green hook. hook installed. Copy the green hook on 8011, and you can unlock the green tether reel. Unlock green tether reel. And when you do that, you want to verify that the tether reel and the cable are clear of the RFG removal path. will be probably one if I get the uh, waste tether on that side clear of it. Three hours and 35 minutes. My, uh, my right safety tether, my right, right waist tether, 8011. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to undo my red hook from my left steering extender and put it on the other side of the green hook. No, actually, I can just undo the green hook. Never mind. Now I do the green hook again, put it on the other side of my red hook. Yeah, that's where we're just getting to. If we uh, leave your load path, and then we can just redo the green hook. <laughs> yep, I agree with you. Sometimes I have to think a little bit harder than I have been, I guess. And with that, Steve, we uh, that completes the safety tether swap procedure. Uh, so you can just verify your load path is and is clear. Your next step is going to be to ingress the APFR. Sultan, we see you opening and restraining the tent MLI. And let us know when you have that on the large hook of the large small red. It is attached already to the Velcro loop. Just want to mark this more in a low profile for the removal and the NZG operation. Copy good words, and uh, would also take a baseline inspection when you have a chance of the white paint on the RFG from what uh, you both clear. can see. All right, cool. Clear. All right, I feel much, feel much better about that. As Steve Bowen prepares to ingress the articulating portable foot restraint, Sultan Aniadi is removing some multi-layer insulation from the S-band antenna. This will allow them to more easily access and remove the RFG, the radio frequency group, which will be taken inside the space station. For Steve, as you get to the ingress, uh, you're going to make sure your tools and tethers are clear, that the ingress aid is stowed, and you can attach your waist tether to the ingress aid. Okay, my waist tether is attached to the ingress aid. I'm going to detach myself from ESP2 and ingress the APFR. Copy. 
And Sultan, when you're uh, complete with the baseline inspection, we'll take any words on any damage or flaking that you may see, and then uh, we'll go for the cables. And I do see some uh, MOV, MOV drive, the one it was uh, shown in the pictures right in front of me, just left of the J1 connection. I do see just smaller ones all around. I don't know if you see my, my camera here. Just start Copy. Tiny, we, tiny maybe. We see a little bit in your camera. If you look up a little bit more, we've got a good view of the rest of the box from uh, Steve's camera. Yeah, that's a good inspection. We appreciate that, Sultan. Um, so you're now go to demate the SASA cables from the RFG and give us an inspection. That's going to be the P9 from the J9 and the P1 from the J1. And then you're going to uh, get the caps from the crew lock bag and cap both ends. All right, so do that. J9 from P9 and then uh, J1 from P1. Thanks. That's correct. Okay, and I have ingress the APFR. I'm ingress the APFR. All my headers are clear of ESP, and I think I'm ready to go to the uh, removal position. Yep, and from Steve, we'll get a, a glove and a hap check from you. Uh, but before we take the com for Robo, uh, okay. Sultan, are you good, good for your next couple steps? Uh, you're going to demate those cables. You're going to retrieve the cap keeper from the crew lock bag, and then you're going to put the caps and the plugs on both cable ends and uh, both box connections. Absolutely, and I did demate G9 and uh, P9, and I see no fault, good fans, and good MI band. Forward, uh, sorry, put it backwards, over center. You're making the other one, do a quick inspection, then you can find the FST. And Steve, uh, if you want to give a double check on your feet uh, on the APFR, uh, we thought we might have seen a little bit of movement on your uh, left heel. Oh, Correction, uh, right heel. Okay right heel. I was checking it. Yeah, uh, well, let's try to play with it. All right, and same thing here on the J1, P1, good pins, not for good EMI bands, ready to cover all of these. Okay, Sultan, we, you are go to uh, get all the caps, and we'll get words on those after the uh, after the ar we move the arm. And so for Steve, uh, did you get your glove and half check? Hey, glove, good, half check. All right, Steve, you can uh, you have the comms to give Frank the go to GJ to the RFG retrieval position. I'm going to try and get my right foot back in first. Uh, that feels good. Okay, Frank. I need to go station forward, 30 centimeters I gave you, and then you can go GTA to the uh, RFG um, removal position. Steve, we copy. Brakes are coming off. Begin GTA to publish. We'll start with that 30 centimeters station forward. Follow it up with 70 centimeters station starboard. Starting motion station forward. That sounds good. Thank you. Actually, sorry, stand by one. We've got to set up one thing. Okay. <laughs> That's the voice of NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who will be controlling the Canada Arm 2 as he begins to relocate Steve Bowen on the end of the Canada Arm 2.
it'll put him in a proper position to uh, remove some bolts that are on the RFG. Sultan in the background has demated two cables from the radio frequency group and is installing caps to protect them for future use. We're starting motion station forward for 24 centimeters. That sounds good. I'm ready. Be good motion. Be good motion. Okay, Steve, starting motion station starboard for seven to zero centimeters. That looks like good motion. Good motion. Stop motion. Motion. Okay, let me take a look. I need about uh, 20 centimeters station starboard and then 20 centimeters um, station let's see you were going starboard right so station later Okay, Steve, we copy uh, 20 more centimeters, continue station starboard, and then 20 centimeters station neighbor, nader. I think that'll do it. All right, start in motion, station starboard. Motion. Copy, good motion. Actually, Station Zenith, I'm sorry, I had that backwards since I'm upside down. Okay, Steve, we copy uh, Station Zenith. That should be towards your feet Thank and you. your left side. Thank you. Starting motion, Station Zenith. Great motion. Copy, good motion. Right, you can stop motion there. Copy, hold position. And you put brakes on, that's a great position, thank you. We copy, GC GCA complete, stand by for brakes. See if brakes are on your go for RFG bolt release. All right, thank you. And we copy that the uh, brakes are back on. So Steve, uh, big picture, when Sultan is done installing the caps, he's gonna hand you a large, small ret. And you're gonna put that large, small ret onto the RFG, and then you're gonna be um, driving the bolts. I understand. Some acronym breakdown for you. Um, Steve Bowen will be receiving He will be attaching a retractable equipment tether to the radio frequency group since that will soon be released from the space station. He'll be using a PGT or a pistol grip tool to release eight structural bolts. After those have been released, he will release one jacking bolt.
Sultan Al Nayadi is meanwhile finishing up removing uh, some of those cables from the S band to the RFG itself and installing caps as those will be reinstalled in the future once the RFG is replaced. I see I'm finishing the last cap. For some reason, it's not setting as I expected. We copy. And one cab is installed on J1. The other one is looking for a better alignment here. We copy. And Sultan, if it's uh, if it gives you a little more workspace, you can take the hook off of the cap that you have installed. Right, copy. Okay, both cabs installed, full test, releasing the hooks. Nicely done. So you can release those hooks, and the caddy's going to go back to the uh, crew lock bag. And then when you're to the crew lock bag, you can pick up two large, small rets, and you'll be handing one of those over to Steve. And uh, we can have Steve start to drive bolts uh, while Sultan continues to tack down the cables. And Steve, just a reminder for you um, that you do have the uh, the page in your cuff if you want to take a look at the orientation. But in general, if you look at the bolts, uh, the middle jacking bolt is bolt E. And then just to the left of that is F. And F is going to be the first one that you do. And then you're going to go basically one left, one right, two left, two right, uh, all the way to the ends. Copy. Yep, that is good. And then uh, hopefully we won't need to know this, but if you look to the left of the leftmost bolt and to the right of the rightmost bolt is where you'd see the spring plungers kind of perpendicular to the bolts. Pretty small little spring plungers. Those guys. Yeah, that's a good good spot. And one more orientation note for you, Steve. Um, when you go to remove it, uh, I know we talked about this a lot in the conferences, but the motion that you'd, you'll want to do is kind of a yawing motion where you would push slightly with your right and pull with your left and then vice versa. So just a real slight yaw uh, onto the uh, RFG as you pull. Copy. If you keep it physically flat, don't lift it till it clears. And uh, we should be able to pull it basically straight back out. Yep, we agree with those words. I think I've got enough flow here to get it out.
I'm heading your way, Steve. Yep, just waiting on the long bridge. I mean, the uh, large small. Thank you. This view from NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's helmet camera. Again, this is Bowen's eighth spacewalk. Using his handheld camera to take some photos of the hardware and maybe even Earth below. The International Space Station is currently flying 260 statute miles over Paraguay. Give you a small talk. Bobby. I have a small hook, and I let me get that in point. Okay, I have a small hook on. At least the large hook. Thank you. The large hook is going on the RFG. Back in place. Yeah, we see that the uh, large small is on the RFG, so for Sultan, uh, you can move back to the crew lock bag, and actually we need a, uh, actually not quite yet, so we're going to have you secure the stanchion cables P1 and P9 to the stanchion with a wire tie, and then you can stow the cap keeper there in crew lock bag one. Hey, copy. And for Steve, uh, we are ready to drive the bolts. Uh, just a reminder around the RFG to watch for sharp edges. Your PGT settings are Bravo 1, counter 2. All right, let me get the cow checked out here. Powering on. The cow. Order. Check the cow, cow pass. The detest is good. And 41. One seven volts. Is that right? At forty one point one seven volts. And we're looking for what now? You want to set Bravo one counter two. Bravo one counterclockwise two. Okay, I got Bravo one counterclockwise two. And the fifth bolt from the left is the fourth bolt from the right. Yep, so it'll be the fourth bolt from the left will be your first one. So F1, it's going to be one to the left of the jacking bolt. Okay, so the numbered A through A from the right. Okay, one to the left of the jacking bolt. And I'm starting at how many turns? That's correct, and you should expect uh, about 6.8 to 12.8 turns. Okay, that's in work. First bolt is seven. Again, Steve Bowen will release eight of these structural bolts. He's using the PGT, or the pistol grip tool. It's essentially a drill. And it helps for him to be in the articulating portable foot restraint that's mounted to the Canada Arm 2, so that he it has some... Like uh, the heel coil's coming out. It is loose and clear now, though. Maybe that's just the spring. It must just be the spring. Spring clear on uh, Foxtrot. I'm ready for Delta. Copy. We are ready for Delta. That was 12.0 turns. Copy. 12.0. Hear that? Back to counterclockwise 2, going for Delta. Concur. Having stable footing having stable footing during these uh, turns keeps Bowen from rotating with the drill. That was 12.0 turns as well. 
Copy 12.0 on, on Bolt Delta. Delta. So you go for Block Gulf, third from the left. Third from the left didn't work. That feels like it's clear as well. And another 12 turns. All right. Copy another 12 turns for Block Golf. Your next will be Block Charlie, third from the right. Point four turns there from Charlie. So now I'm over to Hotel. We concur and copy 10.4 on Charlie and Hotel. On to Hotel. And 10.5 turns on Hotel. Bravo. Yes. Good words. Bolt Bravo, and we copied 10.5 on Bolt Hotel. We're now four hours since the start of today's spacewalk. Steve Bowen now helping release eight bolts. That will help remove the RFG, the and radio frequency the group. NZGL cables, you want them anywhere in the station? Yes, Sultan, you can go anywhere onto that stanchion um, so that they're secure and clear of the RFG removal path. And 12 turns. And now to India. And Sultan, just to clarify my last, we want those cables tacked down to anywhere that's on the same structure as the uh, as the RFG. Understood. It's going to be on the same statue that's carrying the RFG. Copy. That's turning on me. Sorry about that. Somewhere around full turn. All right. Alpha. And we copy that you're on to Alpha. All right, got 13 turns there. Let's check all the springs. Um, Can we copy all the bolts and uh, it's just Charlie. Trying to figure out which ones might. Oh, and um, this one and go for sure. Golf might be uh, worth another turn or two if that's okay. And Steve, we are good with that if you want to put an up a couple of turns into goals. All right. And they all seem run out. They all push back. Okay. Good, good. I think I'm ready for. Echo. 
Okay, and we're going to stand by one and get Sultan in a position to monitor. Bowen has released all eight structural bolts from the radio frequency group. And so, Sultan, we'd like you to move into position to see the aft side of the RFG during removal. Reminder for both of you is that after the center jacking bolt is released, uh, we only want to pull the RFG towards Steve, not up. And to beware of sharp edges on the stanchion mounting plate and the RFG base once that RFG is removed. Well, I say copy all and uh, give me a second, Steve, to position yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, stand by. This view from Sultan on the Adi's helmet camera, who's moving into position to help with the removal of the RFG. Bowen will remove one more bolt, known as the jacking bolt. The hardware would then only be in soft dock. And if you're okay, this, if they're okay with this, I'd like to move the big hook to my right hand side. Uh, just to make it easier when I go to grab the uh, And Steve, the you, cover, are, you are go to move that. Thank you. Sultan, for your positioning, we specifically want you to look at the aft side of the RFG where that soft dock catch is and monitor it tracking. Right. Let's reposition myself here. Give me a second. No worries. And we will have time to tack down those cables uh, once the RFG is removed. That's it. Okay, so we have the aft view of the RFG. You are good to release. Okay. And we concur. And uh, Steve, just one note you're about uh, eight minutes to a sunset if you need to reconfigure anything before you have your hands full. I think I'll be okay, and uh, what about settings again? Okay, so for releasing the RFG center jacking bolt, um, you are go to release that. It's the same settings, Bravo 1, counterclockwise 2, and you're expecting about 24 and a half to 30 and a half turns. Bravo 1, counterclockwise 2, 24 to 30 and a half turns. That's going in work. All right. All right, getting turns. They torqued out at 4.64 uh, turns at uh, 12.1 pounds. And we copy, stand by one. All right, Steve, as you can imagine, this puts us in a crib sheet, so we are going to run you through the steps here. Uh, the first thing we want you to do is, and you got to give a good call, but just re-verify that all of the structural bolts are fully released, that they're, and they're spring-loaded and will free, should free-spin and pop up. All right, let me put my GT away, and I'll double-check all those. Okay. And Sultan, uh, as he oh, drove that jacking bolt, shit. did you see any movement on the soft dock catch? Negative. To me, it was the same, and uh, I didn't see any apparent uh, motion. Yeah, everything seems loose. Okay. Copy. Uh, 
Right, and I think everything's loose. Good, good spring on each one of them. Obviously, sometimes hard to tell when you can't turn. But, yeah, they all seem to spin, actually. Okay, Steve, um, so we're going to have you re-verify that the socket is fully engaged, and we're going to re-attempt a release with the same settings, Bravo 1, Counter 2. Okay, Bravo 1, Counter 2. Bravo 1, the clock was 2. It is fully seated. And folks that with a... Additional turn. We copy it torqued out. Stand by one. And we're going to talk about this for just a minute. Okay. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi are on their first spacewalk together, the fourth of the year. And still no words for you quite yet, but just for your awareness that uh, we're talking about it because with the low turn count that we did get on the jacking bolt, uh, it tells us that it's still engaged in the aft section. Uh, so we are talking about our next steps. I agree. A spacewalk began four hours and ten minutes ago, and the astronauts are on their second major task, which is to remove the RFG, the radio frequency group, from the S-band antenna. The RFG is the computer and electronics that control the S-band system. Bowen just released eight structurable, structural bolts and is working to remove the one jacking bolt Bowen was uh, able to execute fewer turns than were expected okay, so when using the pistol grip tool. Have you put your PGT on Bravo 1 clockwise too? So we're going to basically drive it in a little bit and then reattempt a nominal release torque. So we're going to drive the bolt only one turn on Bravo 1 clockwise too. Okay. Okay, Bravo 1 clockwise 2. And do one turn. Good words. That's fully seated. And and it torque. And it torqued out at uh, twelve point zero as well. And no uh, point oh oh four turns. Okay, we understand that it uh, only went point oh oh four and torqued out. Checking. And we're about 20 seconds to hand over, so you might want to take a picture. We're going to have to talk about this for a sec.
This view from Mission Control Houston as we are in a satellite handover during the spacewalk. Teams here are troubleshooting the removal of the RFG, the radio frequency group that Bowen is working on. He's using the pistol grip tool to remove a jacking bolt that has given fewer turns than expected. Teams previously have outlined uh, several different ways they can troubleshoot this, so they are working through those right now. We are back with you after the handover, but we are still chatting. Okay. And Sultan, while we're waiting for words, um, you can go ahead and finish tacking down those cables if you'd like. All right, thanks. Okay, Steve, uh, here's the plan. Uh, we talked earlier about the, kind of the yaw motion to wiggle the RFG. So this is where you're gonna gently push on your left and pull on your right and then vice versa to see if there's any bit of play. It's really critical right here that we don't go up and down. Uh, so you only wanna go left and right with a slight yaw. And once you've worked that a little bit, we're gonna re-attempt. I see no play. Copy, we understand no play. Right and left, you see no play. No play. Copy, we're going to have you re attempt one more time uh, re up the nominal release. Bravo 1, counter 2.
Bravo 1, counterclockwise 2. Good read back. Bravo 1, counterclockwise 2. Uh, no joy. I got uh, zero point one, four point four pounds torqued out. Okay, we copy, Steve. Stand by one. Coming up on four hours and 20 minutes into the spacewalk, again, Steve Bowen working to remove the RFG, the radio frequency group, part of the S-band antenna. One jacking bolt is being quite stubborn. The team's here helping troubleshoot uh, next steps for Bowen as he uses the pistol grip tool to release the RFG from its stanchion. And Steve, just letting you know, we are still talking about it. Uh, this is kind of a unique case that puts us in between a few things. Uh, so we'll get words back to you in just a minute. <laughs> I understand. I am sure you do. And Sultan, uh, we still don't have our next steps, but um, it may include the pry bar. So just to save a little time, we'd like you to retrieve the pry bar from crew lock bag one. I understand. And I think I'll stand by for those cables because I don't have a good reach under the stanchion but under the RFG without touching it. So I'll stand by for that and I'll prepare the pry bar. Good plan, Sultan. Thanks.
and for both crew while we continue to talk about this, uh, we'd like to take a glove and hap check. And uh, for your awareness, that's a time-based one. You're about four and a half hours PET. Coffee. Coffee. And if you want to do it, well, happens dry. And for EB2, no change on the gloves, all the same, and happens to dry. Copy. Thank you both. So, Todd, is there even a lift you can get that pry bar into back there? I think so, yes. Okay. It hasn't backed off any that we can tell, but I can tell anyway. But will it work without uh, yeah. removing the jack and balls? I don't know. You guys are talking about what everybody down here is talking about, but uh, stand by one. Okay, here's the uh, next steps that we're going to try. Sultan, uh, you guys were kind of reading our minds up there. We're going to have you go to the aft side of the RFG with that pry bar. And what we're going to do is we're going to line the pry bar up in the middle of the RFG with a small end. And we let us know if you can get, if there's a lip or like a catch, you want to put the, the kind of the tooth of the pry bar down. And then so that when you lift up on it, it'll push forward on the RFG only in the direction of the bolts. I think I have a small lip here. And uh, myself and I get orientation and then so five can be positioned. Okay, and just to let you know, uh, both the overall plan, um, we're going to see if we can get any push on that RFG. Once you see any movement at all, then you can stop what you're doing, and we'll try that bolt again. And again, we want to make sure that you're in this as close to the center of the RFG as you can so we don't sideload it. There is an alignment guide right in the middle of the RFG, so you're going to have to go just to one side of that. And when you do put the force into it, it's going to be a slow, steady uh, force. We don't want any impulsing. That's copy. Yeah, and just a little further words. We don't want any kind of impulse hits on the on it. Uh, and it's a the limit is about 75 pounds, but just a nice smooth turn on the crowbar or the pry bar to see if you can get that pushed. Yeah, I think it's positioned very well, but my orientation is not great for flying uh, or force. Uh, I did push a little bit and it did not move. Okay, Sultan, and you can reposition, uh, reposition as you see fit to make sure we're getting a good force impulse, to, uh, impulse or press smoothly onto the aft side of it.
And Sultan, if it's easier at the uh, work site, you can release one of the, it looks like there's two rests on the pry bar. It's not moving, I'm gonna force it too much. Okay, we uh, we copy Sultan. Negative motion, nothing. Okay, stand by. Okay, Steve, uh, we are going to have you try one more time. Um, Bravo one, counter two on the jacking bolt. Uh, Sultan, we want you to stay clear of the aft side and just uh, observe. Uh, we don't want the pry bar in there uh, at all. Okay. Bravo one, better clockwise two, bolt E. I got uh, point one five turns and it's worked out at twelve point four. Okay, we copy. Okay, Steve, we're going to try one more time driving in the bolt one turn. Uh, so it's going to be Bravo 1, clockwise 2, one turn only. Bravo uh, 1, clockwise 2, I need the cow. Hold on. Okay, so clockwise two, Bravo one, clockwise two. Is that correct? One turn. Yeah, and that's correct. Uh, driving in clockwise, one turn. Okay, here we go. Worked out. Back. Point one one turns. Point oh. Okay. Okay, Steve. Then we're going to go Bravo one counter two again to reattempt. Bravo one counter two reattempt. Bravo one kind of clockwise two. Point one one turns, four point three foot pounds. Yeah, we copy that, Steve, and uh, we're going to talk about it for another minute. Absolutely. We're over four and a half hours into today's spacewalk. Our two astronauts, Steve Bowen, uh, this is from his helmet camera view right here. 
and Sultan al Nayadi have completed the first major task of the day, which was to uh, route some cables that will be used on future IROSAs, some rollout solar arrays that will be installed later this year, as well as to secure some multi-layer insulation around the hardware in that area. They've moved on to the second major task of the day, which is to remove the RFG, the radio frequency group, from the S-band antenna. Bowen has removed. Okay, gentlemen, the next step that we're going to take is we're going to coordinate those two movements. So, Sultan, we're going to have you place the pry bar where you had it before, and Steve, you're going to reattempt a to disengage with a nominal torque of Bravo 1 counter 2, and then coordinate your movements so that Sultan is pushing on the back at the same time that Steve is driving the bolt. All right, Bravo 1 counterclockwise 2. And uh, Sultan, if you're ready. Okay, hold on. Let me get it clear. All right. Three, two, and one, go. All right, I torqued out again. And no motion here. Point seven, point one six turns. We copy. Stand by one. The RFG was not designed to be removed during a spacewalk. And there's one bolt that's giving the astronauts trouble right now, so teams on the ground are helping them step through some additional procedures that may help them remove this piece of hardware. The goal is for the team to remove the hardware, bring it inside the space station, and eventually return it to Earth for refurbishment before it is launched back again. Twenty seconds to hand over, and uh, we are still talking about this one.
We are still with you both, and we're still talking it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, this view live inside Mission Control Houston as NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and UAE astronaut Sultan Al Niadi are on uh, a spacewalk today outside the International Space Station. Right now, they are troubleshooting the removal of the RFG, the radio frequency group. This is the brains, essentially, uh, of the orbital replacement unit on the S-band system. It contains the computer and electronics that control it. We're looking to remove this piece of hardware that you can see from NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's helmet camera, bring it inside the space station for eventual refurbishment. Okay, the next step that we're going to have you both try is a combination of the pry bar on the back with Sultan and then the wiggle on the front with you, Steve. Um, we're thinking that we need to overcome a little bit of stiction between the RFG and the mounting plate. Um, and so some gentle yawing sure. at the same time as we use the pry bar on the back. Okay, tell me when you're in position, Sultan. We're still in a good position. We should be steady with a steady push. Wait. Okay, I'm in position. Okay, we'll start yelling. Okay, left. Right. Hey, no motion. Are you seeing anything? A good steady push on it. I am. Yeah, it looks like it. You can see your reflection in your helmet, by the way. Your eyes are. I'm seeing nothing. That's continuing to yaw. Okay, we uh, we understood. We copied no motion. So the next step, uh, Sultan. I know we we have talked about not lifting up the RFG, but uh, uh, it, it's stuck in the position that we're at. Uh, that's kind of our next best option. So Sultan, we're going to have you flip the pry bar around and put the long edge uh, just under the RFG and gently try to lift slightly up on the RFG. And what we're trying to do is exercise some of that stiction between the RFG and the stanchion plate. I copy you, put that in work. Long side. And just to clarify, no no action for you on this one, Steve. I'm just standing back there watching. On both sides. And Sultan, those are good motions, and we'll just have you continue that all the way out to the edges of the box. And Steve, just so you can be ready, after he's uh, exercised the full length of the RFG, we'll have you attempt re-release on Bravo 1, Counter 2, one more time.
And you guys are about Probably three minutes. From one, ten o'clock last night. Those are good words. And uh, you're about three minutes from a sunrise. And just so you know, we are watching the timeline. We have a few more minutes to troubleshoot before we'll have to move on. Okay, that's right. It's an old station at the back. Go, Steve. Okay. All right, and Steve, you are go to reattempt the center jacking bolt. Bravo one, counter two. Bravo one, counterclockwise two. Two words, center jacking bolt. Fully seated. Got a good green light. Twelve points. Three turn points. Three turns. Point three for five, point three turns. We copy. Stand by one. Okay, big picture on the potential next steps. Uh, we're not taking the action yet, but there's a couple of associated words here. So the next step is going to be to increase the PGT to Bravo 7. Uh, and note that the PGT will only, it'll ramp up uh, the torque that it puts into the bolt until it starts moving. Uh, there is a warning associated okay. that this is going to be above the uh, failure torque of the bolt. Increasing in the torque may break the bolt, presenting loose hardware and potential sharp edges at the bolt interface on both the RFG and the stanchion. So be prepared for FOD with a small trash bag and avoid contact with the bolt interface. Copy, okay, no copies. And stand by one, I will call you when uh, we want to take that next step. Coming up on four hours and 50, five zero minutes into the spacewalk, we have an orbital sunrise on the International Space Station. Station flying 262 statute miles over the sea of Japan. This view coming from Steve Bowen's helmet camera, NASA astronaut on his eighth spacewalk today. Teams here on the ground are working to troubleshoot uh, a stuck bolt on this RFG radio frequency group that the teams are trying to remove.
and we are still talking about it before we take this next step. Absolutely. A little more forward, just off the button. A good one. Good. Thank you. Okay, Steve and Sultan, here's the plan. Um, Steve, we are going to have you do Bravo 7, counter 2. Sultan, at the same time, we're going to have you gently push with a pry bar on the back side. And uh, keep in mind uh, that the PGT is only going to put in as much force as needed to start driving that bolt. So if you get an indication that the bolt is broken, as in it's free spinning and the box is not moving anywhere, go ahead and stop. Sultan, as soon as you see motion on the box, stop pushing with a pry bar. I copy all. I copy all as well. All right. Ready um, to see. Bravo, seven, ten o'clock wise, two. Is that correct? Hey, get a good position on this. I'm getting close. Oh, it broke. And let it. Yep, and we see that. Collect. I'm not going to try to catch the washers. And Steve, did you see where the bolt head went, or did that stay captive on your PGT? Not yet. I haven't checked the end of the PGT yet. All right. Copy. Oh. It was at the end of the PGT. I have the bolt head in hand. Put it in my trash bag. One washer was going uh, forward zenith direction, and it wasn't hitting anything. They went zenith and forward of the station. There is one on your left. Okay, we copy your tracking, Sultan.
Okay, we're going to need a minute to talk about this one. Uh, if you see any loose items, uh, please let us know where you see them going. If you don't uh, catch them, we'll take those words, and uh, we're going to talk about this one for a minute. All right, I'll set the bull head in the flashback. Nope, I had it. And then there is a washer just on uh, top of uh, Steve's helmet. Sorry, I don't know if you can see it from my camera. Okay, I'm trying to get, I can't even get this thing through the bristle, bristles on the trash bag. Hold on. All right, it's in the trash bag. So where's another one? It's right on top of your helmet. You can't reach it. Bring it slowly away. Torque broke out. And just for your record. And Steve is, uh, uh, did you get everything? 20.4. 20.4. on the actual torque. And I got the bolt head stowed in the uh, trash bag, and you can see where it sheared off at the base of the uh, white part of the bolt. Okay, we copy that. Uh, that was expected. Um, and uh, once you get uh, things stowed, if you give us a good glove and hap check due to the sharp edges, or sorry, glove check due to the sharp yeah, edges, on. and we're talking about next steps. Okay. Right glove is good. Both gloves are good. Um, might be a small bump on the RTV on my right glove. Can't tell if it's a but it hasn't penetrated RTV. Might okay. need to get inside. Well, might need to take a look at that later on. Okay, we copy the spot on the RTV on the right glove, and you believe it's limited to just the RTV? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good word, Steve. Um, we're obviously talking about this one a little bit. Big picture, we're at five hours of PET. I understand. And we are five hours into today's spacewalk. This view from helmet camera of NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. He and Sultan Alnayadi, UAE astronaut, are working to remove the R. Sultan, we're going to have you use the pry bar to put some uh, pressure on the back of the box. While Steve, we're going to have you pull it. Uh, you can do the gentle left-right wiggle, but we're going to see if this, if by chance uh, this might have been released. <laughs> All right, we'll give it a shot. Hey, we're doing well, Steve. All right, three, two, one, you two steady. I'm, pulling, I'm going left, right, left, right, still no motion. Still push, left, right, left. And we're getting nothing there. We copy.
The two astronauts have been working to remove the RFG, the radio frequency group. However, there was one uh, that was through uh, future steps for the rest of the spacewalk. Okay, Sultan, uh, we're going to have you head back to the staging bag in the airlock, and we're going to have you pick up the EVA hammer. Uh, we think that we might be able to uh, loosen up the cling of the jacking bolt um, with some the use of the EVA hammer. Again, that's in the staging bag in the airlock. All right, copy. Teams continue troubleshooting procedures here in Mission Control Houston and relaying those up to the astronauts. Sultan al Niadi is going to retrieve another tool uh, to attempt in helping remove the RFG from its stanchion. The eight structural bolts released by Bowen all moved as planned. However, the one center jacking bolt would not remove and eventually sheared off. And a reminder, this hardware was not planned to be modified or serviced during a spacewalk. So um, the goal overall, though, is to have it removed, brought inside the space station, and returned to Earth for refurbishment ahead of another launch to the station. This hardware is part of the S-band system, which is our critical command and data link to and from the station. Obviously, we have uh, redundancy in those services, otherwise we wouldn't have the communications that we do today.
In this view from one of the cameras external on the space station, we have a great view of the Canadarm2 on which Steve Bowen is attached. At the top of your screen, that beautiful blue below is the North Pacific Ocean, the space station traveling 261 statute miles above and approximately 17,500 miles per hour or five miles per second. Meanwhile, Emirati astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi on his first spacewalk, which is also the first spacewalk for uh, an astronaut from the United Arab Emirates, has made his way back to the airlock to retrieve an additional tool uh, to assist in troubleshooting with removal of the RFG. And just status for you, Steve, uh, as you hang out there, uh, it does look like Sultan's in the staging bag in the airlock. Uh, we're going to use the EVA hammer on that soft dock catch that's on the back of the RFG. <laughs> Rare day when you get to use the EVA hammer. It was, we got to cut something, and now we're going to use a hammer. Uh, and, and when we, he uses the hammer on the back, <laughs> uh, we're going to let you kind of wiggle the RFG with the handles. I will try. Hey, Steve, as you're sitting there, we're talking about some of the FOD that was generated. Can you give us an idea of how many pieces of FOD uh, you think? We're tracking a bolt and a washer. Did you see anything else? No, I don't, I've got the bolt head. There were two washers that I saw. Um, I don't think I saw much of anything else. But I caught the bolt head, and uh, the two washers, I had. I thought I had one, but uh, it seemed to have speared on me. I didn't see anything else. It was pretty quick. Okay, it was. It was a great catch, actually. The uh, So we, we did see you get the bolt head, um, and so we're just kind of thinking through where the washers could be uh, specific, uh, specifically because you're close to the arm. Did you happen to see what direction the washers went in? Well, kind of tracked both of them initially. Um, if one of them was sat, sitting on the top of my head for a while, but it was drifting behind us uh, shortly thereafter. He said I couldn't get it. I agree. Uh, two washers. The first one was immediately behind Steve and moving towards the arm. And the second one, I, it was moving slowly with the uh, steering station, um, that orientation. and a brief loss of signal with the International Space Station as teams were discussing with the astronauts some of the pieces from the uh, radio frequency group that uh, came apart whenever trying to remove it from its stanchion. 
We will regain communication shortly once satellites have handed over. Meanwhile, we are now five hours and 11 minutes into today's spacewalk. A recap so far, the uh, first main task has been completed. That was to route some cables and uh, secure some. Okay, we copy that the thermal cover is closed and if you get a safer handle check. Negative, not yet. Thermal cover is to be closed now. Ah, uh, sorry, yes, we're with you on voice and we don't quite have your video yet. Both safer handles down. Copy, both safer handles down, thanks. And Sultan, as you get back out to the work site, we're going to have you take up the same position on the aft side of the RFG. When we use the okay. hammer, we're going to be specifically using it on the soft dock catch. Okay, I'm back in position. Okay, copy. So you can see kind of out by your left hand is the soft dock catch. It's that little gold square that uh, sticks out from uh, just above the stanchion. And we want you to position um, so that you can hit that with the hammer, uh, but that if you happen to miss it, you're biased down toward the stanchion side. There's a thin piece of MLI that protects that stanchion. And we do not want to strike the box with a hammer, so we want to make sure that uh, you're in a good position to get the soft dock catch or slightly biased below it. Copy all. Walk. Do you have a specific side of the hammer, rubber side or the metal side? And Sultan, yeah, the yeah, the black side on there, the uh, rubber edge, the non-metal side. Moving. I don't see any motion. Okay, we copy.
This view from the helmet camera of Sultan Al Nayati. And Sultan, you can verify that neither the soft catch nor the box are moving. Get it. Well, the dock is wiggling up and down, but not forward and aft. And there is my there is like a lot dark line reach for an alignment and that is not moving as well. And no forward motion. Okay, we copy. This view a uh, rare use of the EVA hammer. As the astronauts attempt to remove the RFG, the radio frequency group from its stanchion. Okay, we copy. Um, thanks for the try. You can go ahead and stow that tool. Um, you can just put it in the crew lock bag or on your MJBS, whichever you prefer. And we are talking steps to uh, reinstall the RFG. Copy. Copy. Again, the RFG that the astronauts are working to remove was never intended to be serviced during a spacewalk. Steve Bowen was able to remove the eight structural bolts, but had issues with the one jacking bolt still uh, keeping the hardware attached to its stanchion. That bolt head sheared off during troubleshooting procedures. Okay, so you can continue cleaning up that uh, aft work site there. Uh, Steve, we're going to have you redrive the bolts in. Um, so you know this is going to be one of those iterative bolt processes where um, you're going to drive it for five turns, and then we're going to look at the running torque and then give you a final torque. The first bolt we're going to start sure. with is the far left bolt, bolt Juliet. Your settings are Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and we want you to drive for five turns, and it's important to not release the PG2 trigger until five turns, and then let us know the peak running torque. Okay. Bravo one, clockwise two. Go five turns to get peak running torque, going all the way to the left at Juliet. Good read back. Okay. Okay. Right, starting turns. Going clockwise. because the RFG will... And I got an actual running torque of zero. I'm not sure it's, we take a look to see if it's bit. It doesn't look like it's bit at all. We copy. But maybe it, has, it doesn't seem as far out as the others. It has definitely gone in, I just have zero running torque. It must, it must have just entered. We copy, stand by. The RFG was unable to be removed as intended today. Therefore, Steve Bowen will redrive the structural bolts to hold it in place. Okay, Steve, with zero running torque, we're going to have you put the PGT in ratchet clockwise and the MTL at 2.5 foot-pounds. Ratchet clockwise, move the MTL to 2.5. All right, NTL's at 
I'm watching clockwise. You ready for me to go to motor? Yeah, so you should just, at this point, just ratchet uh, clockwise. So you want me to try and just ratchet this thing in? Okay. And it will probably be an additional five turns, Steve. <laughs> and for Sultan, I'm not uh, sure what I'm getting for turns. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, I see that uh, you're cleaning up the bag um, for your steps. Uh, we're talking about the cables, um, and I if. I think that you had the uh, wire tie around the cables, but you had not tacked them down to a hand draw. Is that correct? That's affirmative, yes. Okay, if you can get those stowed on a stanchion with a uh, wire tie, you can, and otherwise we'll have to reinstall them. Right, the handrail outside of the uh, tent. Are we closing the tent anyway? Checking. All right, I'm almost there. All right, I think I'm breaking torque. Yep. That bolt is in. I don't know how many extra turns it was. Probably the five. Okay, Steve, uh, we're going to do the same thing on bolt alpha. Uh, so we're going to start in Bravo 1. You have to reset the MTL to 12 foot pounds. And we'll go clockwise to correction 30.5. Yay, MTL. Back to 30.5 on the MTL. That's affirmative. And for Sultan, um, we'll end up kind of cleaning up everything back there. So uh, your call on the cables, if you can tack them down out of the way, we will end up reinstalling that MLI. I think if I just tack them under the RFG, they'll be secured. Plus, they're capped, and we can cover with the tent. They'll be secured. They'll be in the tent again. We are good with that plan, Sultan. A lot harder in gloves than it is in hand. All right, 30.5. All right, good config. So we're Bravo 1, clockwise 2, 30.5. You're going to go on Bolt Alpha, five turns. Bolt Alpha, five turns. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. All right. 
Alright, manual ratchet. And we go to motor. I'm in motor. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Clock bolt alpha 5 2. Good settings, good bolt. Five point oh six turns. Zero point zero. Okay, we copy. And the good news is you can now just go to Alpha One and drive it in to Torque. That is much better news than going back to MTL. Bravo Alpha One. Switching to Alpha. Verifying I'm at Alpha One and uh, Clockwise Two still. Affirmative. Clockwise two. And I'm going to go till fourth on both alpha. Good words. Here it comes. Bowen is now driving the eight structural bolts he was able to release earlier. In removing the RFG, uh, we got stuck on the all right, about at 2.3 pounds at 4.90 turns. Okay, we copy 2.3 and 4.9. And next we're going to go to the second in from the left, Bolt Hotel. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, 5 turns. Bravo 1, go back to Bravo. Clockwise two, go five turns. Okay, and Steve, actually stand by one. Uh, we're gonna, we don't need to do the iterative on this bolt, so you can go ahead and set it at two alpha one, clockwise two, to drive the whole way. Okay, back to alpha one, clockwise two, they're driving all the way. All right, here comes uh, whatever letter this is, second from the left. And starting turns, timed out, and so let me recal on Cal, pick the Cal, Cal pass, good LED test, 3.1 volts. Okay, so. Alpha 1, clockwise 2. Good settings. And to torque, correct? All right. I got uh, good torque, 2.5 pounds, 4.23 turns. Okay, copy. Uh, we would like the same thing on Bolt Bravo, second one from the right. Bolt Bravo. Alpha 1, clockwise 2. Alpha 1, clockwise 2, Bolt Bravo. Bowen continues to to drive the structural bolts he was able to release earlier today. However, that center jacking bolt, which is now missing, uh, was sheared off, and the RFG was still attached to its stanchion. Therefore, it will not be brought inside today. Redriving these bolts allows uh, the RFG to remain secure outside the station. 2.4 foot pounds, 10.77 turns. Okay, we copy 10.77. Stand by one.
Okay, Steve, uh, we're going to have you do next is that uh, those, those second three that we just drove straight in uh, with Alpha 1, uh, yeah. we're going to take your PGT uh, back to Ratchet, and we're going to rackage clockwise, and we're going to have you release at half a turn, and then after that we're going to have you ratchet uh, all the way in just like you did on the far left bolt. So the first thing you want to do right now is put your PGT in ratchet counterclockwise, and we're going to release half a turn on each of the last three bolts you did. Okay, I'm going to go ratchet counterclockwise, and I will uh, release those three bolts I just drove one half of the turn. That's good words. Uh, this is just to save you from having to go back and forth between uh, regular and ratchet. I appreciate it. All right. Turn. Great turns, and you can do that on the other two as well. All right, half turn, and last one. All right, and we'll change the MTL now. Okay, so now you'll go ratchet clockwise with MTL 2.5. Yeah, okay, change the MTL. All right. And Sultan, while you're waiting there, uh, we'd like you to take your camera and get as many pictures of the backside of that RFG at different angles that you can. Ratchet clockwise, MTL is at 2.5, and I'm going to probably give another half turn or so. Okay? We concur. Good work. Yep, that was about a half a turn, maybe a little bit more. And then coming back over here, the second last bolt. That was just about a half turn. Let me get the last of the four. That was about half a turn as well. Okay, those four bolts are all um, manually set to torque at two and a half miles. All right, good work. Thanks for that, uh, Steve. You can stow your PGT. Okay. Okay, PGT is stowed. And Steve, you can release that large small ret. That's complete. We are five hours and 36 minutes into today's spacewalk. This view from the helmet camera of NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. You're looking at the RFG, the radio frequency group. We were unable to remove that from its stanchion today. The plan was to bring it inside for future refurbishment. So the uh, astronauts just bolted it back in place so it will remain sta safe outside the space station. Okay, big picture. Uh, we are going to be moving a few pages ahead in the procedure. Uh, Sultan will be working ESP2 cleanup, and Steve, you're going to be uh, working um, SSRMS cleanup. Um, and so let me know if this is a good egress position for you or if you'd like to go to the published APFR egress position, in which case we'll hand you back to Robo. 
I think I can get out here. I'm not sure I can remove the APFR from here, but I'll get out and then I'll assess. Okay, copy. And for Sultan, uh, we are going to be reinstalling that MLI, so you can retrieve the pre-staged uh, large small ret uh, that you used to tie that back. This looks like you're already in work, and we'll be putting that back over the RFG uh, with the 10 quarter turn fasteners. The astronauts are stepping into their cleanup procedures. I'm definitely going to need to get a different uh, position to remove the APFR. I didn't get my waist tether off of it. I am still sticky tether to it. Steve Bowen on the left wearing the red striped suit is removing the articulating portable foot restraint from the Canada Arm 2. Sultan Al Nayadi on the right is going to be recovering the hardware that uh, the teams were working to remove with that multi-layer insulation to keep it protected. And for uh, for Steve, if uh, or actually Steve or Sultan, uh, whoever is at a best position to do it, uh, we also would like some still photos of the front side of that RFG where the broken bolt is. And for Steve, uh, if you could give us a look at the Lee. Um, in and around the Lee, uh, we know that those two washers kind of floated off. We just want to make sure that they're not uh, uh, somewhere obvious uh, around the end of our arm. Okay. Uh, can you see the Lee now? If you want me to get closer, I'll climb out on the uh, APFR. And Steve, it's your choice if you want to climb out there or wait till you take the APFR off. All right, well, there I am. I'm out on it. I don't know if that helps that much. Very good back. It's a pretty good shot with your helmet cam, actually. That's what I was hoping. I can get a. I want to get a more direct on view, though. Not sure if that's a little bit better. Could have them reposition. I could look straight down the barrel if you want. Yeah, and uh, it, your call, Steve. Uh, if you uh, don't see anything, uh, any fod in that area, then that's uh, that's good with us. I don't see any fod. Can't check the. Well, that would have been in the wrong direction. Must have bounced. Can't see the uh, the uh, wires that are immediately next to me, whatever her face that is at this point, if that's aft. Yeah, I can't see the aft wire, everything else is clear. Okay, that's a... Steve, we're ready to support GCA if you need it. All right, um, actually, let me see if I can reach my safety, let's see. Yeah, I definitely need to reposition to get this thing out. Uh, Woody, I don't know if you guys can Pitch just the end effector uh, aft. Not sure what direction that is. And current coordinates, and then I can look straight down the barrel, and we can see if there's anything on the stairs or in the uh, the other mechanism. Okay, that's a good report, Steve. Um, we're going to get you moving uh, off the arm, and uh, if you want the uh, Frank, to move the arm to the published APFR egress and removal position, we just want you to be aware that your safety tether base is still there. Yep. I agree. So, uh, and uh, Woody, I'm ready for you to move the arm to the published VA egress position. Okay, Steve, we copy. We're setting up for that now. For awareness, that's just about 22 centimeters station nadir. Okay, I'm going to need to come. Go ahead. Hmm. Breaks are off. Okay, I need uh, 
they need about uh, I guess it's 20 centimeters aft, and then 20 centimeters, uh, 40 centimeters starboard. See, we copy 20 aft and 40 starboard. Stand by. That correct? I'll make that port. I need it toward me. I'm sorry. Motion. Maybe I don't. I don't see motion. That was me. What, are you, what have you got? Steve, we're going to begin GCA, and yeah. we're going to start with your 20 centimeters of station nadir motion. Okay. Starting motion. Take good motion, nadir. Copy good motion. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. New York, 40 centimeters of station port, starting rush. Thank you. Hoberg is inside. Thank you. Stop here. Just stop there for a minute. Continue another 20, what do you Sorry, continue 20. Thank Station you. Port. Station port. 10 to your 20. All right, that's a good position. Stop there. I'll be hold position. All right, and if I can get uh, 20 centimeters aft. Sorry, just 20 there. centimeters station aft. I've got the clear. Copy. Thanks for watching the clearance, Steve. All right, you can stop motion there. That should do it, I hope. Copy. Hold position. Thank you for the brakes on. I think I can get everything else taken care of here. Steve, we copy. GCA complete. Brakes are on. All right. Thank you. Okay, and before we get into your tether swamp, a couple more words for Sultan and the cleanup. Uh, you're going to do those 10 quarter turn fasteners, and then you're going to be looking to stow the large small ret back into crew lock bag one, and then we'll get ready for a crew lock bag one inventory. First, Steve, Relax. we are ready for your safety tether swamp, so when you have a local down, I will read you the steps when you're in position. Okay, let me get a bit better config here. I have my right right tether down, get close by the lock, and this is going through my left E-ring extender. Oh, yes. I will just do that directly. Actually, and let's do it the, I gotta pick up the green hook and I'll transfer it out to. Yep, I can uh, read yeah, it. Yeah, it's right behind me. That's the problem. Yeah. Hold on a second. I gotta get my. So this is behind me. And 
Steve, uh, Sultan might be able to help out with that reel. Uh, Sultan, if you look to your left, you might be able to help uh, Steve out with his reel. To the uh, red reel. All right, copy on it. Done by Steve. Okay. Move uh, body up now. Body up. Time to see your legs. Yeah. Is that to my left now? You're not. Perfect, thank you. That makes this a lot easier. All right, great job. So, Steve, your first, uh, your first step you. is going to be to either lock or tether to the green tether reel. Gonna lock it and put a hook on the reel. Okay, get a large threat on it. Okay, you can retrieve your green hook and you're gonna attach the green hook with the gate closed and hook locked to your red tether reel. Hooks and work. Okay, green hook to the red of the reel. That's complete. Copy, and we want to lock that one. It's locked. Copy, the green hook is locked. You now go to release your yellow hook from the SSRMS handrail tether point. All right, I can release the yellow hook. Get this off the green reel. Astronauts Steve Bowen and Sultan Al Nayadi are uh, cleaning up their work sites. Al Nayadi is reinstalling the multi layer insulation over the S band antenna group. We're about 45 seconds to a handover, and Steve, once you get your yellow hook from the SSRMS handrail tether point, you're going to be attaching it to the green rail and ensuring that it's locked. Copy.
We're in another handover of the tracking data and relay satellite system. The astronauts aboard the International Space Station began their spacewalk five hours and 53 minutes ago. This is planned six and a half hour spacewalk. The first major task was completed flawlessly when the uh, astronauts routed the IROSA cable bundle. They also installed and secured some multi-layer insulation on the mod kits where future IROSAs will be installed. The second major task today was to remove the RFG, the radio frequency group from its stanchion. This is part of the S-band antenna. However, the uh, crew ran into some trouble with one bolt that was stuck and eventually sheared off and were unable to remove it from the stanchion. Therefore, they re-secured it and have now moved into their cleanup tasks. Alright, yellow hook and green, gate closed, slider locked. And I'm gonna unlock my reels. Okay, good word, Steve. We understand yellow hook is locked and on your green rail and you unlocked it, so you do have good safety tether pack. Alright. I understand I have a good safety tether pack. Alright, let's see which way it goes here. All right, Steve, your next step is going to be to retrieve the APFR from the arm and stow it on your BRT. All right, we'll work next. And Sultan, we see you working the uh, MLI. We do have one delta step for you on the MLI. We're going to have to secure that clamshell down, so when you're at a stopping point, let me know, and I will give you words to go do that. This is a view from Steve Bowen's helmet camera as he works to remove the articulating portable foot restraint from the cannon arm too. Tracking, but we are uh, going to continue these cleanup steps and head back inside. Yep, I understand. Hi, right, copy. You are approaching six hours PET. Okay, Woody, I might need you to do something here and take the uh, APFR, well, take the arm, station port, I'll take it station forward. Uh, yeah, take it station forward uh, 30 centimeters, and then Towards me, and that would be station four. Is that correct, Woody? Steve, we copy. The brakes are off. Begin GCA. We're going to start with a motion station forward 30.
30 centimeters, and then we'll come to station port. Thank you. Starting motion, station forward. Good motion. Continue motion. Continue. Fifteen to go. I'll continue to another twenty. Copy. Continue another twenty. Ten to go. You can stop at that ten. Okay, copy, Steve. That's your 20, now uh, 30 centimeter station port? Yep, your 30 centimeter station port, and then we'll, uh, we'll start from there. Okay, Steve, starting motion, 30 centimeter station port. All right, I'm watching. Six hours since the start of the spacewalk, NASA astronaut Woody Hoburg inside the space station is maneuvering the Canada Arm 2. The astronauts outside are working through their cleanup tasks and preparing to ingress after those are complete. Steve, that's reporting. Okay. Stop there and then bring me station, go to station F. Uh, 30 centimeters. We copy station aft, three zero centimeters. Starting motion. Seen to go. And just stop at that 15. And Steve, that's your 30 centimeters complete. Thank you. Perfect. If it breaks on, I'll take the arm. I mean, the uh, if you far off from here. Steve, we copy. GCA complete. All right, and we copy. Steve, breaks are on. You're go for APFR removal. All right, Steve, you can get the APFR, Sultan. Uh, and I'm ready for. Uh, Perfect. Uh, I have words for you. So we're going to have you take an AET from your MWS, and we're going to go over to the clamshell MLI. Um, so we basically need to recreate the strap that we cut earlier. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to have you loop the AET through the clamshell handrail. So it can't be a hook to the handrail. It's got to be looped through and then hooked to itself. And then you're going to take the hook end of the AET, and on the other side of the RFG from where you are at, there are some there's some black seams along that velcro seam and you're going to you can hook the AET to that okay i don't see any black um seams here of your size yep and it's just on um, the other side of that if you translate around to your left i mean the stiff side yeah, good word. So it's over on Steve's side. It's kind of that Velcro seam. It's right along where that Velcro seam was that uh, that you buttoned up when you put it back on. And there should be some uh, black loops. Copy, I see you. I see it, and I'm uh, just waiting for Steve to go. I have two passengers to uh, on that uh, forward area. Okay, the 
KPFR is removed. Okay, Steve, that's going to go on your BRT, and you're going to be heading out uh, to the port seat of cart uh, via the same path that you took this way, so all over the lab uh, to the gap spanner and up the struts. And you'll be picking up that uh, right. fair lead that you left with the AET earlier on the uh, lab struts. All right, I'm putting that in work. Clear my tether for once. And Steve, as you translate, uh, we'd appreciate if you double check the ingress aid to make sure that it's retracted. It is fully retracted and folded over. Thank you for asking and thank you for checking. Copy, Steve. Thank you for that. And uh, you can head out to your fair lead on the lab strut. And that's the lab strut fair lead. And Sultan, you can just position that hook on one of those black uh, tether loops, uh, whichever one you think is the best fit. And then again, the AET is going to get looped through the clamshell handrail and then hooked back to itself. All right, copy that and in walk. Steven Sultan, just for awareness, the robotic arm is going to be maneuvering station forward away from ESP2 to a park position. And uh, I copy, thank you, Woody. And thanks, copy. Uh, thanks, Woody, I copy. Stop and pick up my fair lead. We copy your picking up your fair lead. Arm is starting motion, station forward.
Okay, adjustable equipment tether is installed in the clamshell on one side and to the back loop on the tent. Out of your sight. All right, good work, Sultan. We saw the same thing. We like that config. Uh, so we're going to have you head back over to crew lock bag one. And there was a large small that you had pre-staged outside of that. We want to make sure that's back on the crew lock. All right, didn't work on, but uh, I need to do two more fasteners that I haven't done. Uh, get in the port side. And for big picture, Sultan, when and you go back in three. And uh, yes, for Steve, you're going back into with three, which is the top left. All right. Thank you. And your settings are six, Papa Papa Fox six. Papa Papa Fox six. Okay. Good work. And for Sultan, as you get back to the crew lock bag, I'm going to have you check a couple items. We're not going to do a full crew lock bag inventory, but I'm going to just have you check off a couple items that we used on the CBA. Again, and uh, there a minute we are full view. Bowen and Alniati continue cleanup procedures during today's spacewalk. As you can see, the articulating portable foot restraint has been removed from the cannon arm too. Meanwhile, Alniati has been covering the uh, S-band antenna with the MLI that was removed prior to uh, attempts to remove the RFG from its stanchion. Black on back, the good wiggle pull test. And six, Papa Papa, box six. Looks like it's still in place. Okay, copy, Steve, and can you just double check the pitch knob is locked and it can be depressed? This one knob is locked, but it can be depressed. The problem with this one is the collar or the uh, with actuation mechanism. Uh, it again gave me the indications that it was uh, locked, black on black, but it uh, was not locked. And it wouldn't, wouldn't stay in place. Um, and it was, I actually took it, tried to take it back out, pushed it back in to get it to go black on black. So it's, it's in now, but I don't have high confidence in the collar on this one. It was difficult to move the caller. Okay, yeah, we copy. Thanks for those words, Steve, and we've got those notes down. Um, so at this point, you are uh, actually going to give me a 
Glove and half inspection, please. Okay, let me get this rat off the APFR. For Sultan, uh, we want you to double check on that crew lock bag that you picked up the large small that we had pre-staged on that handrail. That's affirmative. It's uh, hooked to the bag again. Copy, and then we want you to verify that the hammer and the pry bar are in the, are in the crew lock bag. We have got the hammer and the pry bar in the cooler bag. And you can confirm from my view as well. Okay, copy. And then the other last two things we want to check is the wire tie caddy and then the uh, two wire ties in series that you had put together uh, to use that we didn't use. Okay, the wire, the wire tie caddy is, is inside, just checking for the and you do not need to open the bag. Last time I checked it in. They're in, I haven't, uh, haven't used them under the wire caddy. Okay, good word, Sultan. You're going to put that on your BRT, and then we're going to have you translate back over to where you installed the AET, and I'm going to have you do one quick adjustment on it on your way back to the airlock. All right, copy and work. And my love to give my hat is dry. Copy, Steve. Uh, so you can uh, translate off of the CETA cart, and as you do so, please depress the port CETA brake pedals twice as you go by, and then you can translate to the anchor hooks. The port CETA brake, I go by. I will put that in work. Okay, brake depressed twice. And we copy the brake pedals. Thank you. Want to get started as well? And Steve, sure, we'll take it as you go by. It is started. And we are about five minutes from sunrise. Okay, and we'll look back back to our BRT ready for uh, time shell extra work. Yeah, so the AET, we had you loop one side on the clamshell and then the other side we said to hook it. What we'd like you to do is just take that side that you hooked and unhook it and loop it through just like you did the other side. So therefore both sides are looped through and hooked back to the AET itself. Okay, I see. Thanks. I'll do that now.
And Steve, reminder, you're looking for mile marker 5760. Yeah, I thought I could, uh, maybe I could run down and put those other two bags back in the crew lot. Give yourself down one less thing to do. How does that sound for a plan? With that? Yeah, copy. We're good with that plan. Okay. You head down there right now. Okay, ET, uh, loop back to itself, both sides. We appreciate that, Sultan. And so now you can uh, translate over to the airlock. So as you get back to the airlock, you can coordinate um, how you guys want to get things back in. We have uh, crew lock bag two and crew lock bag three above the airlock uh, toolboxes, and we have the GoPro on the side of the crew lock. All right, so done. I'm right here. I can hand you down the bag. Uh, once you get, once you put your crew lock bag in, then I'll hand you these bags. This is Mission Control Houston. We have a handover of our satellites that allow us to communicate with the International Space Station. Both astronauts Steve Bowen and Sultan Al Nayadi have completed the cleanup portion of today's spacewalk. They are now moving back toward the Quest uh, airlock. Uh, that's where. Oh, I see it. They have a couple bags to retrieve that will be stowed in the airlock. Afterward, both astronauts will close the hatch once they have ingressed. They'll open the thermal cover. And we copy thermal cover open. And a reminder, you have uh, three large small rets on that D-ring extender, uh, one for each of the crew lock bags, one, two, and three. Copy, yeah, thanks. And Sultan, just for your awareness, uh, we're looking at the SCUs. Uh, good call by your crewmate inside. Uh, and just note that both of the SCUs are kind of routed on the forward side of the airlock. So before you ingress, uh, you may want to move Steve's onto the aft side of the airlock. Right. Right. I'm just going to wait before I ingress. Uh, uh, Steve, uh, are you good with that GoPro to bring back? Uh, I was going to bring down. Uh, if you can come out and just. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'll just uh, assume so, uh, crew lock bag number one, and then. Yeah, and then come back out. I'll give you crew lock bag number two and number three. All right, thanks. And then we'll be. Uh, you can get the, the GoPro while I run out to the. All right. Let me get the. Yeah, uh, Brett. 
you both of the crewlock bags. And we'll bring them down. And we copy. I can probably grab that GoPro too. Take these right now. You're ready. Here's the uh, crew lock bag number two. You want to take all the way? What's that? You want you want to dangerous? I want you to put this inside. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, let me route your SCU first. Okay. Do you have a visual of my uh, base pedal? I do. Okay, so I'm going to hook to the internal steering sender okay. with my other waist pedal and charge hook is get closed, lock, black on black, small hook, get closed, lock, black on black. Okay, you have, can you use the waist pedal from your side? Okay. Uh, waist pedal, can you reduce it from your side? What way is it? Uh, to the handrail. Oh, okay, hold on a second. I've got two handfuls of the bag. Here's right. the majority of the FCEs that can hand these bags to you. Alright, hold on. Actually, I'll release that wave feather. I can do that. Right yeah, that, that'd be helpful, and I'll be ready. Once you're done, uh, okay, your waist feather is released. Okay, thanks. And I uh, don't have any place to hook it. Just release it. I'll okay. Get it. Be secured inside. This view from Sultan on the Yadi's helmet camera. As he is inside the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. And Steve, can you confirm that's both uh, two and okay, three right. crew lock bags? I have two and three right next to me. Okay, copy. Both thanks. Reddit and Bridget Head in. Okay, Steve, ready. All right, here's two. Get it? Ah, uh, hold on. All right, let me try and roll over a little bit more. Okay, here's two. This view outside the airlock as NASA astronaut Steve Bowen prepares to ingress. And I'm going to release yours. Okay. Good. Okay, coming your way. Got it. Let go. 
The International Space Station recently crossed into an orbital daytime, but in the distance you can see Earth's moon, the destination of NASA's Artemis program. You have a red switch. I'd like me release my red suit back to you. I got too many reds out here. Okay, you can do that. Okay, here comes that red coming up to you. All right. All right, give me one second. I'll go get the uh, GoPro, and then I'll head out, and we'll... And we can hear. Yep, so crew locks one, bags one, two, and three are in the airlock. So once we have the GoPro in, then, uh, Steve, you can also, uh, you can go out to the anchor hooks. Yeah, the GoPro attached. Copy. And we see you translating out. Well, that's the, I'm going to translate. I'll pin that this whole time, then I'll head out. I've got too many hooks on me right now. Copy. Okay, so if you're ready to receive yeah. this, I'll give you the big hook. And tell me when you get it secured to something. Well, let me get to. All right. Okay, go. I see what you're doing. Why don't you just attach the test point? I'll give you the big hook when you got it. Okay. Did you release it? Yeah. I can release it. All right. I'm going to head out to the uh, others. All right, so I'll be waiting for you. Good work. That's good. Out to mile marker 5760. 5760 on my way. And just for your awareness, the arm is going to move a little closer to ESP2, no impact. You're doing copies, thanks. All right, 5760. Okay, copy, Steve. Here. Okay. 
All right, Steve, as you get set, your first step is going to be to ret to EV2's anchor hook. It's the one that's on 3217, the diagonal inboard handrail. 3217, ret to the anchor hook. All right. Release the tension in that a little bit. This view from the helmet camera of NASA astronaut Steve Bowen as he continues cleanup procedures. We are now six hours and 34 minutes into today's spacewalk. Emirati astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi has ingressed to the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. So see if you're going to ret to that one as you are, then you're going to release it and hook it to your anchor hook, or sorry, it, that anchor hook to your waist tether with gate closed, sliders locked. All right. I'm going to get my waist tether ready. Alright, got his tether, his green, his hook, my hook, they close slide a lock, my right, his tether, they close slide a lock. Copy Steve, that is a good safety tether config, that's now your primary safety tether path. You are now go to release your anchor hook from 3011, just to your left, and you can stow it on your workstation. All right, 
for your awareness, Steve. All my bills are, all hooks are closed, locked black on black, attached to the airlock through my waist feather. Both hooks are they closed, locked black on black. You're good to go. All right, and head back. And we copy, Steve, and good word, Sultan. And Steve, as you move inboard, just a reminder, as you go by the Aceta cart, we'd like you to depress those uh, brake pedals two times. All right. You can call it handrail, but in no system. And Sultan, now that Steve's heading back your way, uh, you are go to remove your SCU from the stowage pouch and remove your DCM cover and connect your SCU to your DCM. All right, copy, we'll put that in work. Having released the necessary anchor hook as well as Sultan Al Nayadi's anchor hook, Steve Bowen is headed back to the airlock following his safety tether. And Sultan, you can also turn your HECA off. All right. The view below Bowen is that of the North Pacific Ocean as the space station travels 260 statute miles above it. LEDs off. Copy LED off. All right. Herbert Cedar Cart. Herbert Cedar Cart breaks depressed. We copy big breaks depressed. So you can head back to the airlock. And as you enter the airlock, you can also turn off your HECA. All right. Pull down to your spur. And Ed, if you could relay something to the uh, rest of MTC, we'd like to take our queen to take on Fox Shot 6. We understand queen to Fox 6. And we'd like Costa to make that move if you can before he gets really dizzy. He's on it. This wire tie, this wire tie on 554, uh, what's that supposed to do? Long wire tie? So, Steve, that's to assist if the thermal cover doesn't stay closed, so we can leave it where it is. Uh, if you think it might be in the okay. way, you can set it low profile. That's what I just did. Thank you. I didn't know if there was some additional. 
Good check. We appreciate but it. I'm going to take my leg, taking my legs in, and I'm going to see if I can reach the. Okay, Steve, you're good to go. I have all the bags. Send the forward and made that for you. Come back out and get the cover. Good work. We'll have you ingress and close the thermal cover. And if you both want to, this is where you can reduce your TCV setting. Um, as you get on the SCU, it has warmer water. So to minimize risk of fogging, you can reduce your cooling just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Turn that. Get the cover in place. Okay. See where you are. Okay. Clear seat. Okay, my legs are coming back then. All right. Try to get this on its magnetic. So Steve, you're going to release the hook from the stowage tether point and attach the hook to the magnetic plate D-ring and then cinch the strap until snug, six lines visible, and you're going to verify the magnet is engaged. All right, I'm working on the hook. Another point. Bowen and on the audio both back inside the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, now closing the thermal cover ahead of closing the airlock hatch. Okay. Please get that cinched down. Cinched. And the magnet actually looks like it's attached. Excellent. Right here, let me adjust my cooling. And Steve, we can have you turn off your HECA, and then you're going to be removing the SCU from its stowage pouch, removing your DCM cover, and installing your SCU. All right, let me get the HECA off. And a reminder now that you're in, if you wanted to reduce your TCB setting to a lower number uh, to minimize the risk of fogging prior to putting on your SEU. All right, let me fix that. And then for EV2, I've got uh, my SEU connected to my DCM, and my current TCB settings is free. Copy TCV settings for Sultan is three, and copy your SCU is connected. Uh, I'm going to try to make mine colder. And I am at seven. Okay, now I'm going to get my SCU connected. We copy. Okay. Hope I'm going to need you to uh, okay. help find my SCU first of all. Okay. And I'm not sure what I'm bumping up against. All right, stand by. It's me, so I move forward. Thank you. And try to find the SCU pouch. Okay, let me find. I don't know where it went. Okay, your SCU is here. What does that mean? Okay. My SCU is here. I'm gonna give it to you now. Okay. 
Which way? Uh, just uh, free your hand. Front of your mini station. Huh? Front of your mini work station. Yeah, but which end is the... Yeah, your, your, your left arm. Yeah. Front of your elbow. Yeah. Very okay. well. My FTU is connected. Let me see. It's a lock. And locked. All right. We'll get this out of the... And Steve, we copy that your SCU is connected and locked. Um, if you could give us a, right, a line on how many lines visible on the cinch strap for the thermal cover. Sure. I have... One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we like that answer. So for both of you, you can now switch your water to off OFF forward and expect water is off message. Okay, EV1, water is off. EV2, water is off. Okay, we copy uh, Steve and Sultan, you both have your water OFF, and we'll hold here for two minutes. I want to take a moment to congratulate you on the successful spacewalk. We're nearing 25 years of spacewalks on the ISS in support of assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Steve, congratulations on your eighth EVA and your first in 12 years. Sultan, you've now entered an exclusive club of humans who have stepped out into the void of space, and in doing so, you've marked a milestone for the United Arab Emirates. This is a historic moment for the expanding face of global cooperation. Congratulations to you both. Thank you, Ann. And uh, I know things didn't go exactly as we had hoped, but we were trying something uh, that we had never really intended to do. And sometimes that doesn't work, but it was uh, a tremendous opportunity. And I, I want to really want to thank the global community for getting that SAS uh, located where it was. I would have uh, hated to try and carry that with us, uh, but everybody, the whole team did a fantastic job. Uh, I really appreciate all the work that goes went into it, and it's been a great honor to be a participant in uh, Photon's very first spacewalk, and I'm sure he has a few words to say as well. Thank you, Steve, and thank you. Um, <clears throat> um, it's a great moment for, um, for the UAE, and um, um, I would like to thank my leadership, the leadership of the UAE, and uh, the USA, specifically MBRC, and NASA for believing in us and for giving us this opportunity. This might be the first in the Arab world, but it definitely won't be the last. We have astronauts under training now to undergo future missions to the ISS, to the Lunar Service, and to Mars. So I would like to thank everybody who helped preparing us for this moment. Uh, I have. Um, First of all, allow me to say a few, like, a few words in Arabic. I want to thank my family for this opportunity to give them their support. I want to thank my family for their support. I want to thank the President of the Emirates and the United States of America, Mr. Mohamed Barraj, and the President of the United States of America, and 
توصيلنا لهذا المكان والحمد لله هذه مجرد بداية في مهمات فضائية إلى المحطة وإلى القمر وإلى المريخ بإذن الله وشكرا جميعا Thank you, Steve and Sultan, for those words. And that uh, takes our two minutes. So at this time, Steve, you can verify the outer hatch clear is, is clear of hardware and verify the handle position per the hatch decal, and then close and lock the hatch. All right. Outer hatch is clear. And the handle's per, where it's supposed to be per the decal. With both astronauts now back inside the airlock, uh, Steve Bowen will close the door, close the airlock hatch, ahead of beginning repressurization. We're now at six hours and 54 minutes into the spacewalk. Again, that spacewalk started when the spacesuits were set to battery power. This view. Okay, we copy that the EV hatch is closed and locked. Sultan on the UIA can check that oxygen EMU 1 and 2 valves are open. Okay, if you oxygen EMU 1 and 2 are open. You can switch the power EV 1 and 2 to on ON and verify the LEDs and volts. All right, copy. On, on EV1 and on EV2. And I have uh, two EMUs uh, LEDs are on. Copy and verify volts are 18 to 19. That's affirmative. Uh, EV1, 18.6. EV2, 18.5. And I have amps zero on EV1 and zero decimal zero 02 on EV2. Okay, we copy. So both of you on your DCMs, you can switch power to SCU and expect a warning tone. Okay, EV1 power to SCU. Where do we start? Copy, and that with that, I will hand you back over to Woody. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, everybody. And Thanks so much, Ann. Thank you, Ann. Steve Sultan, welcome back. We're looking forward to getting you inside. On your DCM, I'll have you take your O2 actuators to press. Okay, O2 actuators to under press. As you do that, verify that O2 ACT press is displayed on your TCM. Ground IV Ann McLean has handed uh, duties back over to Suit IV Woody Hoberg, this view of the equipment lock portion. Okay. O2 actuator press on EV2. All right, give me a minute.
Hold on. Okay, O2 actuator Okay, Steve, copy, and for both of you, just confirm you saw that O2 actuator press displayed on your DCM. Oh, well, man. That O2 actuator. Let me get it over. And we've now crossed into the seven-hour mark of today's spacewalk, that beginning at 11 a.m. Central Time. 8, 11 a.m. Central Time this morning. Finally. We got nice one, Steve. Steve, on the EV hatch, check that the MPEV is closed. MPEV is closed. Copy closed. All right, we're going to start the crew lock repress now at 2012. Let me know if you'd like me to increase or decrease the rate. We'll start slow. All right. Thank you. Repressurization of the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock has begun. When we get the pressure up to four decimal zero psi, you can expect an alert sound. Copy. Check off. The pressure increasing. Say again. Pressure is increasing. How's the rate feeling? Feels good here. Yeah, my baby too. Good. And with repressurization of the crew lock re, uh, beginning, that rounds out today's spacewalk time at 7 hours and 1 minute, beginning at 8.11 8, 8, a.m. Central Time and ending at 3.12 p.m. Central Time. Pressure in the crew lock is now 1.27 psi and climbing. During today's spacewalk, the astronauts uh, were able to route some cables as well as secure some multi-layer insulation that prepares two mod kits for future installation of the IROSAs. These are International Space Station rollout solar arrays that we expect to arrive later this summer. The crew then moved on to the RFG, or the radio frequency group that's part of the S-band antenna. The goal today was to remove the RFG. However, they ran into a difficult bolt, which ended up uh, breaking off, and were unable to remove that portion of equipment. 
the team reinstalled the equipment and so it is safe outside the International Space Station. The astronauts then moved into cleanup period before ingressing the airlock and again we are in repress. Again that rounds us out at a seven hour and one minute spacewalk today. This was the eighth spacewalk for Steve Bowen and the very first for Sultan Al Nayadi, marking the very first spacewalk for any Emirati astronaut. Okay, guys, we're going to hold here two minutes for a leak check. Correction, three minutes for a leak check. With the completion of today's spacewalk at seven hours and one minute, we have a readout of uh, our spacewalk stats so far. In total, this was the 261st spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly, Maintenance, and Upgrades. It was the fourth out of the space station this year, but the second for Expedition 69. Today was the eighth spacewalk for Steve Bowen, totaling 54 hours and 19 minutes, and obviously the very first for Al Nayadi with seven hours and one minute. That was today's spacewalk total time, but in total with those 261 spacewalks, that is equal to 69 days, three hours and 24 minutes of spacewalking time. Guys, while we're waiting here, you can check that your glove heaters are off, OFF. They are off, and if you want, we feel off. Okay, and check your gloves for contamination. Let us know if you see anything. I just have a couple uh, little smears. 
by Greece or just, I don't know what, just the usual block stuff, global. And EB2 gloves uh, nominal. Okay, we copy a couple black smudges on Steve's gloves and nominal gloves on EV2. We got 30 more seconds, so don't do it yet, but the next step will be O2 actuators to IV. Copy. All right, Steven Sultan, that leak check passed with flying colors. You can take your O2 actuator to IV. All right, copy. All right, EV1. Almost IV currently. ID for ED2, ED1. We did two ID as well. Copy that. We're going to continue the repress. Again, let me know if you'd like to change the rates. Repressurization of the crew lock continues. Now at 5.1 pounds per square inch. They'll bring that up to about 14.7 PSI, which will equal out with the rest of the International Space Station, also similar to what we are used to experiencing on Earth. And just another heads up near the end of this repress, you should expect one more alert zone. Elsewhere aboard the International Space Station, Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Patelin, and Andrei Fedyaev, three Roscosmos cosmonauts, are in the pre-sleep portion of their evening. It's currently 8.23 p.m. GMT, the time used aboard the International Space Station. 